in late 2020, we released Modite Adventure, a cross-platform action adventure game that is designed to be deployed on this little guy, the LDK game console. And shortly after releasing that game, we had a lot of our clients and team members asking us, how did you fit such a rich soundtrack in such a tiny device? And so I thought, what better way than to demonstrate Modus's culture of open source and sharing what we know, than showing you how we did it. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how we created the music, and we're actually gonna show you some of the steps we implemented during our development process. Hope you enjoy this video. When working on the music from Modus Adventure, we had a few technical challenges that we needed to overcome. First, if we look at the physical size of the device, it's kind of small. It has a single core CPU with about 128 megs of RAM. And truth be told, the storage on this device is 16 gigabytes. So the constraint for us was more around the CPU and not really around the space. So if we think about music as a whole, there are a few ways we can actually develop and deploy music. The first is using a raw data file, such as perhaps a WAV file. Now the drawbacks for a WAV file is it's gonna be very, very large from the size perspective if we wanted to maintain great quality. For us, maintaining anything around CD quality was of the utmost importance. So if we think about the size perspective, um, it's gonna be rather large. Here we have the main menu song this is the second song that plays when you start the, the video game. And at 9 megs, it's really large. Now, remember I said, on the device, you have a 16 gig micro SD card. But if we think about the development cycle and the deployment cycle, every time we went to develop the game, that 9 meg asset would have to be copied. You multiply that times however many songs we have, 19 and the time frames to test and deploy would become insurmountable. Now, one of the benefits of this pattern is that it would have low CPU overhead. Essentially, for every iteration of the uh, sound buffer loop, we would basically be reading data off of storage and shuttling it off to the, data, the digital to analog converter. But the size definitely didn't allow us to move forward. Now, we could make a change and say we're going to use reduce the quality but we would be still around the four meg mark if we were at half the CD quality sampler rate. So that wasn't a good solution for us. We could have chosen an MP3 file. Now this would give us a good size perspective. Here we have the main menu song. It's coming in at a hefty 820 kilobyte size. Now when I say hefty relative to nine megabytes, 820K sounds palatable. It would work. However, while it would satisfy the space requirement, it would be incredibly expensive on the CPU side as the CPU, the, for each iteration of the, the sound buffer loop, it would essentially have to decode data just in time to fill the, the digital analog converter buffers. And that CPU cost would have blown our budget and we wouldn't be able to have a, a game that would maintain 60 frames per second. So what else is there? Well, we could have chosen a MIDI file. MIDI files are awesome. They essentially are small data files that contain node information with track information with some things like velocities and a couple of other things like instruments. But we really didn't like the idea of not being able to craft the instruments. And by the way, we wanted to create a, a, a Nintendo 8-bit sound. We want to recreate that because that's what reminds us of the awesome games we played as children. So the MIDI file was out. So what are we left with? Well, it turns out the answer stems all the way back from 1994. Yes, 1994. And we ended up using a format called the Extended Module Format, XM for short, and this format gives us a great balance between relatively low CPU overhead and extremely low disk usage or storage usage. And the XM format actually has its roots all the way back to the 80s 
the Amiga module format. And so to compare what an MP3 would look like relative to the XM format, I've collected all of the songs that comprise Modite Adventure. We actually technically have 19. And if I select an <laughs> empty song as a hack, we won't go into that because it's very technical. But if we choose the 19 songs, that comes in at 896 kilobytes, which is just a shy, a tad over the 820K for just that one song in the MP3 format. OK, so how is it that we're able to cram all of this music into such a small package? Well, this is going to be the meat of this video. So let's go ahead and dive into how the XM format works, and then we'll walk through some of the workflows that we use to develop the music. So the XM format is essentially a file that contains what are called samples, which are basically raw wave data for instruments that you would like to use in your song. They contain a collection of notes that comprise your song, and you organize them in what are called tracks. These are single monophonic regions that you can use to create music. And as the video game is playing, or let's say the music is playing back, essentially what the player portion for the XM format does is it reads through the information and it plays back the, the samples based on the note data that it finds in the file. So it basically will stretch and shrink the sample to change its pitch. And at the end, it takes those tracks and it mixes them together into a final sound. So the tool we used to compose music for Modite Adventure is called Open Mod Plug Tracker. You see, a tracker essentially contains a few components. The biggest component is going to be the com composition tool. And then the back end component is going to be what's called the player. That's the piece that reads the data that you're essentially putting into the system just in time. And so here, we have our tracker. And if you notice, we have what looks like node information organized in vertical columns. And these are the tracks. But before we dive into this view, we're going to take a look at the samples. Let me go ahead and quit an application that I had running in the background. That's going to go ahead and clear things up. So here we actually have our samples. This is essentially a square wave. It is essentially what the Nintendo Entertainment System would use as raw instruments. It has a very limited palette of, of sounds it could create. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is play some notes using this little guy, which is my handy dandy MIDI controller. And so if I go ahead and try some notes. We can hear the notes playing back at different pitches, the sample. If we play the sample at its root pitch, that's going to be a C down here. And we can change instruments. This is going to be the 50% square. That's 75%. And other samples include things like the triangle wave, which is uh, used for bass. And then some other things like uh, drum kicks. snares, hi-hats, rim shots, and so forth. OK, so we have our samples. And so what we essentially do is we compose our music here using our MIDI tool. And if I press record and I choose a sample that perhaps is the 50% square wave, I could play notes that sound like this. And I would go down this sheet organizing my notes based on the tempo and how the bars are constructed. And I would basically compose my music. And so if we play back the main menu theme, this is what it sounds like in its full eight, nine channel pattern. And if I remove channels, we can hear other instruments come through quickly. Now notice I said this is monophonic. So in order to produce chords, we need to use multiple channels or tracks. 
And so our workflow was really, really simple. We would go through Compose Our Music, and so we would work on patterns, and then we order the patterns here in this view up here. So this would be pattern zero, then place pattern one, then pattern zero, then pattern two, then pattern three, four, five, and so forth. And so if you notice, there are some repeat, re repeated patterns here in this, this order. And the reason this is is so that we could save space. So that's one of the tricks that the XM format uses to make sure that the file sizes are small. If you compose your music uh, in a way that reuses data, then your file sizes get much smaller. So what we can do here is we can, um, we can actually start to change some notes. So to show you what this looks like in-game, or sounds like in-game, I'm going to go ahead and open up our IDE, and we're going to go ahead and run the game. And I'll show you exactly where this gets started. So that was our intro theme, or splash theme. And if I press the keyboard, OK. So the music plays. And we're going to go ahead and jump to our editor. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add some notes here. So if we play this back, and I'll start to riff a little bit. Okay, so that kind of sounded cool. So uh, that was around, all right, so I'll press record, throw in a G here, and probably around, let's call it here. Let's see what this sounds like. I didn't like that. Let's make it a little bit longer. There's some space. Oh, cool. OK. OK, now here, we're going to follow it up with probably a few more notes. So it would be the C. Try this. Let's try this. Oops. All right, let's like it, listen to it in its entirety. OK, cool. So what I'm going to do is just save this file. I'll go back to my IDE, and I'll just simply run it and just try to get a feel for what it looks like, or excuse me, what it sounds like in game. We'll go ahead and move forward. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We walk through our decision-making process for choosing a technology for our video game music and walk through some of our workflow on how we actually develop that music. If you have any questions about what we did, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you're interested about learning more and keeping up with our videos around Vue.js, Quarkus, Jira, and other technologies, please consider subscribing. Also, if you enjoyed this and you think a friend might enjoy it, please consider sharing as well. I really appreciate your time. Thank you and be well.